All right, welcome back. Uh, we are going to get started with example two. So for example two, we're going to be finding the coordinates of an end point. So in example one, we found the coordinates of a midpoint, right? So we had um, some type of line. We were given this end point and this end point, and we had to determine what the midpoint was, right? But now what it's saying is we are going to determine one of the values of the, the end point. So they're probably going to give us an end point and a midpoint, and then we have to figure out what that other end point is. So um, it says M is the midpoint of X, Y. So I'm going to go ahead and call this X and call this Y, and um, this is going to be M, the midpoint. All right. Uh, and if you remember, right, we have, um, what do we have? We would call this like x1, y1, and this was our x2, y2, and then this is our midpoint, which we call x, y, right? Okay, perfect. So this says m is the midpoint of x, y. So we have m being the midpoint of x, y. It says x has the coordinates 2, 7. All right, so I'm going to write that here. This is 2, 7. Okay, so that's our x1 and our y1. Uh, and m, the midpoint, has the coordinate 6, 1. So 6, 1. So this is our x and our y. It says find the coordinates of y, which is right here, our x2 and our y2. That's what we have to determine, right, is the um, coordinates of y, which is our endpoint. So to do that, we're just going to go ahead and write our formula down. So our formula, remember, for the midpoint, and you need to write this every time, our midpoint is x, y equals the average of the x values, which is x1 plus x2 all over 2, comma, the average of the y values, y1 plus y2 all over 2. All right, then we just substitute in our values. So um, we have the midpoint. So instead of writing x, y, I'm going to write 6, 1 because that's what the midpoint is. So the midpoint is 6, 1. 6 is my x, 1 is my y. And this midpoint equals x1, which is 2, plus x2. Well, we don't know what x2 is. So we got to figure that out. And um, this is all over 2, comma, our y1 is 7 plus our y2, well, we got to figure that out too. And this is all over 2. So really, what happens here is that once we do this, let's go back to the previous example, okay? Um, when we were doing this problem up here, I'm gonna go all the way up here to this, and we had, remember we had um, the two endpoints and we figured out the midpoint? So this, this, when we did this, the average of the x values, right? We did all that, we substituted that in, we simplified, we ended up with negative five. Negative five is equal to this x part of the midpoint. And then what did we do? Well. At the same time, we were finding the average of the y values, which is over here, right? So we substituted those values in, we simplified, we ended up with 5. Well, 5 is the y part of the midpoint, all right? So basically, all of this that we did, this all ended up equaling that x part of the midpoint, and all of this that we did ended up equaling the y part of the midpoint. So that is the same thing here. Okay, this, all of this right here is actually equal to that x part, right, of the midpoint. This is the x part of the midpoint. And all of this here is actually ends up equaling the y part of the midpoint. So because we know that, what happens is we can actually split this into two different, oops, sorry about that, it's two different equations. So we can say that six is equal to, that x part is equal to this, two plus x two all over two. And we can say that the y part, one, 
is equal to this right here, the midpoint, the y part of the midpoint is equal to this, seven plus the average of the y values, seven plus y2 all over two. So we basically have two different formulas and then we just solve each one. Okay, so I'm gonna solve this one first. So to do that, um, I gotta get this x2 by itself. So all of this is divided by two, so I'm gonna do the inverse of divi division, which is multiplication, and I'm just gonna multiply this whole thing by two over one, right? Or just two, the twos are gonna cancel out. Whatever I do to one side, I have to do the other. So two times six is gonna be 12 equals, these cancel, I'm left with two plus x2. And now it's just a simple algebra problem. Gotta get this by itself, so get rid of that. That's positive, so I have to do the inverse, which would be a negative two to both sides. 12 minus two is 10 equals x2. And then I'm gonna do my little symmetric property of equality because I always like having the variable on the left side. So we have the x2 equals 10. All right, cool. So now we just need to do the same thing for the y part. So we're trying to isolate this y2, get it by itself. So to do that, all of this is divided by two, so we're just gonna multiply it all by two, two both sides, right? These two, let's cancel out. So we're left with two times one, which is two, seven plus y2. And then we just wanna get y2 by itself, so we subtract seven to both sides. Two minus seven is negative five equals y2. And then we do the symmetric property of equality and that's y2 equals negative five. So that means that the coordinates of y, goodness gracious, I keep bumping this thing on accident, which causes it to shake, I'm sorry. Um, the coordinates of y are um, x2, y2, right? When we go up here to our picture, that's what y is, x2, y2, and so that just means that y is, uh, the x2 is 10, and the y2 is negative five. So that's our answer. Those are the coordinates of the endpoint up there. All right, perfect. So we're gonna go ahead and try this again. Okay, so here we go. This says S is the midpoint of RT. R has the coordinates of negative six, negative one, and S has the coordinates of negative one, one. Find the coordinates of T. So whenever I have something like this, I always wanna make sure that I draw a picture because I, I think that whenever you have a picture, it's just easier to see what's going on. So it says S is the midpoint of RT. So I'm gonna draw RT. I feel like a different color. Okay. So we have RT here. Let me make it a little longer. Okay, that's line segment RT. So this is R right here. This is T right here, and then it says that S is the midpoint, so just right here, S is the midpoint. And um, we know that uh, the coordinates of R are going to be, this is gonna be our X1, Y1, and this is uh, gonna be our X2, Y2. Ooh, that's a little cramped. And S is our midpoint, so that's just X, Y, okay? So what is the information it gives us? It says R is negative six, negative one. So this is R, so negative six, negative one. And I could draw this actually in a coordinate plane and then it would be like super like accurate. And I should have said that with this last one here, but I just kind of drew uh, this problem here. I just, I just kind of drew a rough sketch. Uh, so this isn't entirely super duper accurate, but I could put it, make a whole coordinate plane and then, um, you know, plot these points and then it would be um, more accurate looking, but I'm just kind of doing this little rough sketch to just get a general idea of what's going on. Um, but my answer is going to be accurate. Uh, so it says R has a coordinates negative six, negative one, and then S has a coordinates. Okay, so the S is our midpoint of negative one, one. Okay, this is my x1, y1, okay, this is my x, this is my y, and I'm trying to figure out the coordinates of t, which is my x2, y2, so find the coordinates of t. All right, great. So we're gonna go ahead and write down that midpoint formula. So the midpoint is x, y equals the average of the x values, right? So x1 plus x2 all over two. 
and the average of the y values, y1 plus y2 all over 2, okay? Um, and then I define my terms over there, over here. All right, so we're just going to substitute those values in. So the midpoint is um, the x is uh, negative 1, and the y is 1 equals x1 is negative 6 plus x2 is what we're trying to figure out, all over 2. And then the y1 is negative 1 plus the y2 is what we're trying to figure out, all over 2. All right, make that a little bigger. Perfect. Uh, yeah, so here we are. And remember what we talked about last time. All of this is equal to that. And all of this over here is equal to this. So this is the x part and this is the y part of the midpoint. So we're just, this is where it separates into two different, oops, sorry, man, keep bumping that, sorry. Um, two different equations. So this is the x, right? So um, we're going to go negative 1 equals negative 6 plus x2 all over 2. And then the other formula would be 1 equals negative 1 plus y2 all over 2. And we'll just solve each equation one at a time. So we'll solve this one first. So this is all divided by 2. So the inverse operation would be to multiply it all by 2 to both sides. And then we go 2 times negative 1, which is negative 2, equals, okay, those canceled. So we're left with negative 6 plus x2. We're trying to get this by itself. So we do the inverse of this. This is a negative. So we do the positive plus 6 to both sides. Addition property of equality. That cancels. Negative 2 plus 6 would be 4, right? This is a negative. This is a positive. Whenever the signs are different, you take the difference. The difference between 6 and 2 is 4. And 6 numbers, six is bigger than 2, so 6 is positive. So it's going to be a positive 4. X2. And then we do a lovely little symmetric property of equality. And boom, we have it right there. There is our X value for this endpoint. Then we're going to go ahead and do the same thing over here for the Y part. So trying to get this. This is all divided by 2, so we're going to do the inverse operation, multiply the whole thing by 2 again. And then we have to do it to both sides because that's what you do. It's equality. Everything has to be the same. Uh, bum, 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 bum. These cancel out. 2 times 1 is 2 equals negative 1 plus y2. All right. Got to get this by itself. This is the negative. We've got to do the inverse, which would be an addition property of equality to both sides. 2 plus 1 is 3 equals those cancel. Y2, symmetric property of equality, equals 3. There we have it. So we have our um, end point of T. Remember, T is the X2, Y2, right? That's what we have over here for T. And then we just substitute those values in. We have T is a 4 and Y2 is 3. So there we have it. That is what our endpoint is. So whenever you're doing these problems on your homework, we need it to look like this, all right? So we will see you, that's it for example two. I'll see you in a little bit for example three.